Today we're going to go over NetScaler Insight. Uh, this was a new piece of technology to me for the most part. It's not something I've used before. With each week I like to uh, to pick a topic that I've never worked on before. Last year it was uh, reverse seamless, the year before it was okay, anyway. Pick something new, learn something new, deliver it. So great. Um, before we start, uh, my name is Andrew Morgan. Uh, I'm an independent end user computing consultant uh, based out of Ireland. Yes, we do still have IT systems. And um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky to be a Citrix CDP, a VMware, v expert, and an Aurea software or SVP, and uh, my colleague Ronnie. Hey, um, Ryan Wilton, I uh, also work out of Dublin for Company Data Solutions. Um, I've been working with Citrix Technologies for yeah, 15 years. So easily. Yeah. Easily, yeah. So um, yeah, I've been looking at Netscore and so really I'm doing a lot of demos in the house and I'm trying to my network tab to have them there. It's not direct. Let's see if we can put some data in there so it's not blank on the door. So that's it. So that's it. Yeah, so I mean, Ronnie uh, really works for uh, Citrix History based out of Ireland. We won't hold that against him. <laughs> and uh, we've, uh, we've been working together a lot, particularly on uh, Nutanix projects recently. But uh, we said, you know what, we'll give it a try. So uh, that's where we are and that's what we're doing today. Um, the topics we're going to do is kind of why presentation, what is, a little bit of a demo of what's in there, um, what it's available in, um, deploying it, integrating it, uh, what kind of modes it supports, because it supports so many modes, it's just crazy. Uh, what's new in version 11? Uh, version 11 is actually the, the key piece of this presentation because it includes all the features that you actually are going to require for production. And um, some sizing considerations there as well. Now, sadly, Citrix had enough data sizing for version 11, so we have 10.5 sizing, but you'll see why I'm highlighting them because it requires huge net scales. So, um, anyway, let's get it going. Uh, so, why do this presentation? Um, for a lot of customers out there who've got Zen Appers and Desktop and NetScaler, a lot of this functionality is free to them. They can just download the, uh, the VPX or, you know, plug in a, uh, no, sorry, uh, download the virtual appliance for Insight. Plug it into a Netscale or Netflow, wonderful. You now have statistics. Actually, really, really good, uh, particularly with Insight like gone and um, ongoing, and some of those statistics not being available anymore in the record. Uh, this stuff was cool. Um, one of the big downsides as well with Netscaler Insight was because it's pumping data from the Netscaler out into a different appliance, but if the user wasn't traversing the Netscaler, as in if they were an internal land user, you weren't getting any data without some pretty horrible workarounds. So that's no longer an issue anymore, so we can talk about that. Um, we get a lot of customer queries about it when they hear it's free and I want to do something for free. That's how it's called it. Um, there is really good reporting historical data in there if you have the right license versions. And in version 11 is actually included SLAs, thresholds, breach them, get an alert. Once my user is having a crap experience with Starbucks, that's nice, but he's not going to use Starbucks, so you know, at least with phones, I can tell them to stop the play. So, yeah, good. So what is Nescator Insight? Um, very, very basic diagram. Nescator sits in the middle. Traffic goes through the Nescator, sort of back and forth. Statistics are taken from that Nescator, pumped out via AppFlow to a virtual machine, which is your Insight machine. And Insight shows all the lovely reports. So calculate statistics both from web and from HDX traffic as well. Pumps it out, lovely reports. It's, it's very, very simple. And there, there are some advanced um, workflows you can do with this, which I'll show you a little later, like Cloud Bridge can be put in place. You can do with L2, L3 traffic, traversing it by registering 494 or 2598. But I mean, in a nutshell, that's it. Traffic goes in, pumped out over here for statistics, review the statistics. Wonderful. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of Insight, the data that's there, because there's no point in going through all of this crap about that or Insight without actually seeing why it's good. So I'm going to jump into the demo of what's in there first. Now I'm gathering, so this may be painful, bear with me. So it looks like a Nesca, first of all. Um, and this is, I'm going directly to Nescatter Insight, not the Nescatter that's pumping data out. So, virtual machine, hopefully we'll get there. And we did, yay! So, kind of similar to what you're seeing with, um, with a Nescatter today, but over here on the side, you can see obviously on the dashboard, you've got Web Insight, HX Insight. Web Insight, any of the websites that you may be publishing, off a net scatter, you can create specific app flow policies for those, and it comes out over here. You don't have to do all of them, you can do a subset. Similarly with HDX as well, you pick the VPN <coughs> that you want to enumerate for data, and you go from there. 
um, the graphs are, you know, it's really, really friendly. You can do kind of one hour, one day, one week, one month kind of views. So we'll do a month just so we can show you at the moment. Uh, we'll go down to applications to see what I'm load balancing here. So very, very simple for me. I've just chosen the, a load balance version storefront. You see which, you know, which one's being used the most. No threshold breaches at the moment. You get a map of what and where the traffic has come from. So that was Jerry and logging into my lab. That was Case Baggerman. That was me praying the Wi-Fi would work. <laughs> so, and you get some, you get some really good statistics out here. Kind of the bandwidth that's gone through, the response time you're expecting, the amount of hits you've received, and the countries as well. So really, really interesting data. And if this is freely available to you, why not have a quick look? You know. And you know, as you get into the application specifically, you get a view of the specific applications. Each one of these can be configured as well. So while at the moment we're seeing one set of statistics, you can actually choose to see bandwidth, response time, clients, client network latency. So this is all specific to the website of things. You get a view of what devices, what URLs have been hit, um, the, the clients that are connecting in, servers, all kind of different data, you know, whether it's post get or head or anything like that. So it's, it's really, really good. But I mean, for me, I prefer the HGX insight just because I'm a desktop and apps kind of guy. Um, you get a really nice view of the ICA, you know, uh, return time, the WAN latency, DC latency, um, who's logged in in the last month, so there we are. I'm not telling fibs, there's Jerry and there's Keith. Uh, and you get threshold breaches as well. So I haven't pre-configured any threshold breaches, but if I had a threshold breach for any of my crappy internet connections here, this would be lighting up like a Christmas tree. So mm -hmm. that's it in a nutshell. Um, now if you want to see specific data about a user, you know, you can go in there. I've had 15 desktop launch counts, not surprising, it's my lab. Um, what devices have come from, which sessions uh, that, that were inactive and how long for. And again, each one of these is different. Uh, you've got bandwidth, DC latency, and WAN latency, I'll talk to the difference about that one there. Lovely, lovely graphs, and all this stuff is also available in the record. <coughs> I'll show you in a little bit. So, again, if you're licensed for it, free reporting, Really interesting data. Takes about 60 seconds for the traffic to go from an escalator up to AppFlow. It's a configurable policy. So after 60 seconds, you should see anything in real time. That was real time. 60 seconds later. So yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's interesting to say the least. And it's it's a good amount of data as you can actually get out. Of it. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Ronnie for some of the requirements. Here. Okay, so just take this through some of the requirements, but. Understand at the start, uh, most of these new features are in version 11, so you're probably only finding up the latest and greatest thing. Okay, so web insight was available from 9.3 and above, um, whereas XDX insight is available from version 10.1. Um, as I say, version 11 is really where you want to be going if you're going to try this out. Um, for if you're on Zap, um, 6.5 um, as well. You you were able to run it in 5.6, um, but again, it's available in Director and um, 7.x and above. Um, you can bring cloud rights into the mix, which is really handy if you have a branch office or something and you're getting a lot of issues down around there. And um, you can drill down into the traffic at that yeah. point and see where it's going. I mean, obviously, you know, if you do have this environment set up and ready, if you have an environment, at least this, I mean, which to be fair, you probably should, otherwise you've got bigger issues. But I mean, if, if you have an environment of at least this build, there's no change to the environment for it for you to start gathering this data from the net scatter straight away, yeah. unless you want internal land traffic. And we'll talk about that a little later. But if you are on this version, you can be using Insight today with a net scatter. Okay, and um, as well, just it's available on your other clients. You do need receiver version 3.4 enterprise edition or version 4 standard. Um, Version 11.8 in the Mac. Um, it's available now on just tablets as well. Um, from it's not for other clients. A lot of statistics up here. I think I'm just going to put the slides up on these blog so. Oh yeah, there. just uh, there. Yeah, there are a couple of of, uh, of numbers we're going to be throwing at you, but it, you can consume this at a later point. I'll tweet the link to my blog post a bit later, and you can download this and have a browse at your leisure with the, the videos. Yeah. So if you're looking to gather inside traffic. Do need a certain level of browser, which again most people should then play as well. Some enterprises may be wrong sometimes, but yeah, um, again, 
it's a fine fire cross, all the enterprises are supported. And you you really you really want to be going platinum if you can. That gives you the the detailed reporting and all the SLA stuff. Um, but for real time troubleshooting, you know, enterprise is, is a good good fit as well because you get up to an hour of data. So if it's just a troubleshooting tool you're looking for enterprise and SCOs, it's just quite not for that. Um, Again, this is where your web and site licensing requirements um, in Platinum. The I for just the minimum of round trip time and some of the earlier versions in the reports. Oh, so those are no round trip time? Yeah. So, yeah, you, you get just about that, and that's not yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's just um, So, as you were at Integrates and the director, so that network tab is usually blank. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, the, the broken time. button that we all click on director, yeah. And the deployments, um, it's really nice to get this data and you can drill, drill down into, into it and through the users and see what's actually going on. So, some of the things you have that's really helpful for help desk people. Yeah, well, we've had, we have a demo on actually integrating this piece a little later as well, and it doesn't fully work, which is always funny. So, <laughs> okay, so. Pull it all together again, that's, that's a lot of things there, but um, Director gives you a lot of information already, but once you put in the, the Netscore Enterprise piece, you get system on so network data, or platinum, you get on the network data and pull it out again. Well, I'd argue that point, actually, Director doesn't have all of your data at the best of time, but this adds a little bit of value to that, doesn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah no, it's it's good. Good. Okay, so why use it? Again, Andy touched on it at the start. Um, it, it'll, for insights, for instance, it'll give you that data. You know, if you're publishing websites into the outside world, which clients are experiencing mm -hmm. latency, if someone's getting a bad experience, maybe they're on an Android device, maybe your website isn't configured for it or something like that, you know. Um, it'll give you what applications you can filter per hour, per day, per week. So if you're troubleshooting you know, in the last hour, you're looking at it. Um, for it will give you what the client person is coming from and what applications or servers are sending the most error related responses. So, are we able the information again to yeah. tackle users? Yeah. Exactly. So, it's, it's really, it's really, I find it's really good for troubleshooting. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, Citrix always gets blamed, but you know, it's the case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's, 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 it's very hard to figure out some things. <laughs> this, this, this might be, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I asked you a question. Oh. Yeah, uh, do you think you can use it for service desk support uh, as well, or yeah. is it too complex? And, and um, well, I don't think it's too complex to be educated. So yeah, that's I, true. I, yeah, for the right time. Uh, yeah. You know, in fairness to Citrix, this is one of the easier interfaces they have. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but I can imagine that it helps your service desk uh, yeah. employees as well to ensure that it's not just latency or where exactly, in the yeah. entire stack. Do you know what I mean? If you're yeah, sure. it's not responding and you can see straight away, you'll see in the demo when you drill down into the, it gives, gives you the yeah. little line graph and it shows you what your latency is and which side of the data center it is, is it the user client's wireless is bad, is it the response coming from the server? Yeah. Well, and that's exactly it, I mean, Brian Moore wrote a really great tool and um, published it yesterday, oh, yeah. showing bandit and showing all that kind of stuff, but that's only what the, what the, the endpoint is seeing why it's 600 milliseconds latency, or why it's throwing out so much data. At, you've only got one data point there. You're not saying what it was before it goes to the net or what it was when it goes out of the net scatter, what latency was coming back and forth. So again, it's, it's adding value like that. Yeah, it breaks it down, sort of. Yeah. yeah. I will, we'll, we'll, we'll show them that. Later. Yeah, I figured it could take the frustration out of the initial conversation, because yeah, you're not pointing fingers at You could identify they on a crappy wire design. Very quickly, you know. Yeah. Please get out of Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why you send that? It's the X inside, so again, um, gives you that deep dive into your um, session, what's going on, kind of touched on there already with some of the license. It'll tell you what's in the DMZ, is it not? Is it an endpoint? Is it the wireless network? And um, what your users are consuming a lot of bandwidth, that could be a lot of videos or something. Know that we're complaining about your session, but they're not really yeah. doing. They're supposed to be doing positive as well. Um, what applications across your, your farm have been launched? 
give you statistics. Um, so it does actually give you yes. some data about the applications that actually use on your phone as well, not just the connection information. So you do get some some pretty pertinent data back there about frequency use, frequency of use of applications and desktops. Hello. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, so it's um, it, I. I it, it was an undertaking to, to, to start looking at this product, and I actually really enjoyed it. So, I mean, it, it's definitely worth looking at. Um, yeah, so a little bit before, if you have cloud bridge in the mix as well, you can um, get, get that branch out instead and go to the program and there's something out there as well. So. Which, uh, which I think, just on the cloud bridge thing, I think it's important because you're, you're correlating data from cloud bridge, from NetScaler, from Access Gateway, from web, so you've got that kind of single point of entry for, for, your, for your network data, in theory. And then show you a little later on how to get the land traffic straight out without having to change your routing, so you can literally implement this in 10 minutes if you're that way inclined. So, it's good, it's good. So demo time. Um, I, was, uh, I was worried that we were going to run out of uh, Wi-Fi, which we did. And I've already tethered, and I'm sure that's cost me a fortune. My, uh, my financial advisor over there is probably going to kill me, which is <laughs> 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 She almost feel paid. Um, so in, in, in the demo, I'm just going to give a quick example. It's only like four minutes long. Just how quickly you can actually get inside of the running. It's, um, it's surprisingly good. So I'm going to go ahead and demo this on... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and demo this uh, in um, vSphere, the full client, not the web shit. So, um, because that's probably what we're also using. Uh, Down by the ISO, or ISO, if you have access to Nescare, you have access to it. It's just the inside entry. Take your storage, all that kind of crap. We've all deployed an LVF. Couldn't figure out how to fast forward, so that's why I'm dancing like a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and choose your storage, and off you go. Be careful with storage, we'll talk about it a bit later on, but if you have a lot of users, this will pump information out. So, it's there. Uh, you do have a choice of two networks if you wish to aggregate it. If you don't want to, just choose the same one. Nest kind of figures that end in the whistle. Um, in we go. Uh, just like that scatter, hardened version of um, the name escapes now. Then it finds. Uh, we might see it. Hold on. Uh, BSD. BSD. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so uh, on first boot, it'll start up. Starts up pretty quickly. Uh, it goes ahead and asks you for your, your information about your network. Uh, just in order to get on the network in the first place, and uh, pretty much off it goes. Uh, version 11 has some um, some really good scalability features. 10.5, there's your VM. Don't ask for more. But with this version, you can do all kinds of crazy scalability stuff, um, which I'll show you later on in the demo. So as part of the setup, it's actually been tuned up there to do you want to be an agent, do you want to be a server, do you want to be a data collector, do you want to be a database, all this kind of stuff. Good stuff, you know, proper scalable platform. So. <laughs> okay, and there we go, wizard, wonderful. So, uh, IP address um, is what I want to do, pop it into whatever you want. Obviously, it needs to be able to talk directly to the net scaler, SSH, so port 22. Same network or not, we'll do. Um, and uh, DNS and IPv4. Can't specify more than one DNS server for some reason. Comma, does not like. Tries to ping the comma. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's pretty much it. So there we go. Uh, inside server, connector, database, uh, inside agent. That's the question. Nobody's going to get to farm press 5. Um, and off we go. Uh, once you reboot, over to wizard. Um, very similar to the Netscatter wizard. Uh, and that's not always a good thing. Uh, we've all done the Netscatter wizard thing where we kick it off, forget a requirement, cancel, try to do it again. It's already done half of the work already. <laughs> Delete, quit, run out of the door. <laughs> so, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, it really is. It's, it's for a lot of fun. Don't get into it. Oh, sorry. Okay. Hello? <laughs> so, uh, again, um, pop in the IP address of the NetScaler, uh, using password NS root, NS root, or whatever you set it up for. Those also support LDAP or anything else. Uh, that wasn't actually an issue, but how hard it's slightly. Put an patch in it. 
as well. Some are. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, our first one is there now is it's looking for a web inside the uh, there. <coughs> so, it, it enumerates your um, your list of, uh, of uh, you know, advanced tips. You can choose the one you want, pop in a true statement, and it will go off, configure your MS getter for you, and point the out and let it back out itself. It works really, really well. Still wouldn't do it in production. <laughs> <laughs> but it works really, really well. I couldn't break it. And I'm good at breaking things. So, um, once you've gone ahead and added, you don't need to do the web piece, but I figured I'd do web and HDX just to show you. So, I added two services. I don't know why I decided to choose a, uh, an LDAP service. That doesn't work very well. So, um, once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and flip over to HDX and it'll give us a list of our VPN. So, you choose your VPN, true statement, off you go. And then it inserts an app policy or app flow policy into your um, Nescare Gateway, which pumps the traffic back out to Insight. Happy days. It does it all for you. And there we go. So that's my app flow policy. So you, you know, just true and off you go. We're all familiar with that. Um, and it's ICA, not TCP. Don't know why you use TCP. I'm not sure. Haven't gotten that far. Maybe next year. So, um, and once, literally once you've done this, your data will start to collect from that Netscatter then every 60 seconds. Land traffic, not necessarily, or sorry, land traffic, anybody traversing the Netscatter. Land tra or land traffic we'll talk about a little later. So that's it. Uh, back to the inventory list. And um, with any luck, what are we doing here? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm adding a different uh, to Netscatter. So uh, I wasn't sure if this is necessary or not. Some of you can answer that later. But I included both in the load balance. So you know, HHH. Oh, my door. There was an accident. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I added the, the next camera for us. So anyway, we should get to the end of this video, and then at the... So... Is that fine? Yeah, good. Uh, okay, so once we've added it, uh, we'll hop over to the storefront, or uh, let's go get it connected and see if this actually works. Um, one thing to note, the geo data, you know, the map you saw where all our little friends came in, that doesn't actually work either, we can I'll show you in a second. So, let's see. as I mentioned, I've no bounce in my store from FIP, so we should see HDA or web traffic straight away. So there we go, back to the dashboard, and fingers crossed. As I mentioned, it does take 60 seconds, so hopefully I include that. There we go, fast forward. So there you go, so there's our Netscape VPX hitting our low box web, um, storefront servers, and we've got data for that straight away. So very, very easy, very, very quick, very, very handy. So um, that's pretty much it. Let's get out of here. Back to that, and shift F5 we learned today. Uh, Okay, so Geodata, uh, if you want the Netscatter to capture your IP information for your, where your people are coming from, it doesn't work natively. Uh, George, a friend of mine from, uh, from Citrix, wrote a great blog. Again, it'll be in the deck and you can have a look at it later. Download your Geodata, upload it into the, into the Inside Center, or reboot your Inside Center. Jobs are done. Now you start getting your maps. And then I can prove people that I do actually have friends who use my stuff. So, all is done. So, um, director uh, integration. So, we saw that we can use the, the, the directly from the Insight Center, but I mean, if your administrators or your users or anybody else are already in director, chances are you probably want to have that data there too, which is good. Um, you have to be careful with this one because um, you get a choice of HTTP or HTTPS. If you access director via HTTPS, you've now got a cross site scripting issue or chain, you know. Um, some traffic is coming from HTTP, some traffic is coming from HTTPS. Google Chrome does not like that at all. So uh, use Director in HTTP and uh, Insight in HTTP, or use it in HTTPS and install a search on your Insight uh, which I didn't do, so it was lazy. Okay, so log into your storefront server, which I've done here already. And I've got a, uh, a, uh, an application, sysdirector config forward slash config netscatter. 
and it goes ahead and runs you through another wizard. Um, pop in the inside IP address, uh, not the Netscale IP address. Don't put in the Netscale IP address. Or completely destroyed my stolen environment. Couldn't reverse it out. <laughs> so uh, that was the end of that. Um, uh, chances are that was probably something to do with me and not uh, the product. But yeah, uh, HTTPS and hit, or just be careful with that caveat I spoke about already because you think it's not working, but Chrome just doesn't even tell you it's not allowing it. It just doesn't work. So uh, good old Chrome. Uh, once you've enabled it, um, I found it was best to restart. Didn't quite work the way I would have liked. But once you've restarted, over to director. <coughs> Obviously, if you've got two, do the same thing on those. It'd be great if that configuration floated around and not like storefront, no manual yeah. application. As I said, just citrus. <laughs> so hopefully now our network tab will work. Hey, there we go. So the data directly from from Insight. It's a bit of an iframe, you know. I mean, it's not it's not wonderfully integrated. They look similar, but it's an iframe, you know. So the credentials I've specified there, DNS root, DNS root storefront is using to get over to the next or back again. So it's not like it's passed through or anything like that. You're specifying credentials and source. Um, so this is the bit where I would go off and I try to find a session and actually use the network tab in the session. <coughs> I you notice I'm actually using HTTP as well because I didn't reverse that change. All the data comes in and nada. Oh. <laughs> For some reason, I just could not get this working. I tried three times. Uh, I reached out to, uh, to uh, a couple of people and I had that response. <laughs> I, I believe it works. I haven't seen it working. But uh, I, uh, I had to record this demo very late notice, obviously, with the Wi Fi being crap, and I didn't have time to uh, fix it. So, there we go. Um, What's the CBA acronym called that? Can't be arsed. Huh? Can't be arsed, as I think. So they can't be bothered. Ah. Obviously, you're European. I don't know. UK, the UK. Sean, my really nerdy side, I think that was in Bangalore. We used to see that a lot in World of Warcraft, so I'm not sure if it's just Ireland. Anyway, that was a great time in my life. So, looking at the point comes, um, you know, again, just like the graph earlier on, you can have it in a single hop. Traffic comes in, through the net scaler, app flow goes off, and off you go again. Um, but they have more. I just wanted to ask the room, does anybody currently do a double hop in production? Has anybody done double hop in production for net scaler database? Yes. Okay, so nobody. I, I can't understand why this exists. Either our salesperson or just loves selling net scalers. <laughs> or, <laughs> I just never see the production use case, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 good. Good. Yeah. But, but why? Governmental. Governmental. Extra layers. Yeah. Extra layers. Yeah. 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 Banking. Yeah, because even, even my tight bank isn't doing this. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, so you, you can do it that way. And what's interesting is they've actually included a new functionality for this. So you can actually see the difference of your latency on either side. So you'd have both net scalers in this scenario going into Insight Center, and Insight Center will track the differences as the traffic goes into each of them, which is handy. Again, I've never seen a production use case for double hop, but um, apparently it's big in financials, and Jerry said he does it a lot, so I'm not sure. He still couldn't give me a good reason why. Um, CloudBridge, I already hit on this earlier on, so I mean, if you've got a WAN accelerator, Insight can pull directly from that. So for every CloudBridge hop, you're getting data coming in and out, and Insight's aggregating all that together for you. So, Really, really, really handy if you have Cleverage, and of course you've got Netscaler too. Um, I don't know if you've ever looked at it. Has anybody got Cleverage here? One, two. Um, that's a strange statistic, because I actually find them great. Um, if you do have one issues, or if you're concerned about compression, or and they're very, very good for web, SMB, and traffic that isn't necessarily HDX as well. So, we'll have a look at Cleverage, they are very good. Um, I use version 7.4. Yeah, version I had a I, yeah I lost some hair. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> With version of code level six, that that nearly killed seven me. Seven three and seven four was the same. Never just the same day. Yes, yeah, that was a great blog post. Yeah, I uh, I cried myself into my soup that day. Um, so, uh, transparent mode. Then this is this is the network fiddling thing I was talking about. Where if you want if you want an L two and route your traffic all your traffic through the net here in order to get this data back out again, it's a massive network change massive network chain, and it's probably not something that you'd want to do 
by default. I mean, a lot of monitoring products will go this way in the sense that they'll, they'll port out and get all the data back that way. But with the SOX proxy option that I'm going to cover off in a minute, this use case has pretty much gone away if you want that land traffic. This previously was the way to get the land traffic because you're forcing users to go by, but you don't need to do it anymore. So, what's new in version 11? Um, we have. Um, well, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, one. So, uh, version 11 is, is, a, is a big, is a big uh, improvement. Uh, I only went straight to 11, and I looked at all the conversion 10.5. I was kind of glad I did. So, you've got um, thresholds and metrics, so you can SMS or email out alerts if it breaks out of your thresholds that you may not be happy about. Uh, director is only just getting this information. Inside has it already. Um, Support for web inside metrics, great. Um, the threshold breach uh, can be figured, you know, which you talked and dashboard view of threshold. Uh, so yeah, you've got dashboards. Wonderful. Thresholds. Um, for up to 10.5, you had just an inside center. It had its own data handler. It has its own database. It was a very busy machine if you had a big environment. They've added a whole load of scalability options with it version 11, so you can you know, have separate EB clusters, separate connectors, different data on, on the outside, and that's their inside collecting the data for the web interface. So I would consider this find the enterprise ready, is that be fair to say? Because you can scale and scale and scale. I'm not going to ask you for comment anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, you used to be so good to be working for Citrix. Bingo medals. Yeah, I know, I know. I did enjoy your IoT session, so it might be very nice to you. Um, HGX Insight snapshots. So. Um, one of the features that I really like, remember we talked about our multi top uh, enhancements, so now you can get a diagram of where the user is coming from, what traffic the, the, tra or the, the user has traversed, so whether it's over cloud bridge, some net scatter, some net scatter, or whatever else, you'll get a graph in there. And you've got your one latency, the data center latency, so latency between the net scatter and the, uh, the endpoint, and one between the net scatter and the person out there. So it's, uh, it's good, lots of, lots of useful information. Um, and the SOX proxy integration, this is my favorite feature, um, because you no longer need to do that crazy crap for internal end users. You know, if you had 10 clients that required program neighborhood agents, then you couldn't plug them in via the net scatter to get traffic out for inside center. If you had any reason why your users weren't logging through the net scatter, like for example, if you had two-factor authentication, you didn't want to create another instance or anything like that, this option is just brilliant. So, I mean, <coughs> on storefront, you modify the default ICA mark, <coughs> putting in three SOX options, pointing the proxy at a Netscaler um, cache redirection object. Cache redirection object then spits the data out to Insight, and you have all your data. So when the ICA session starts, it goes off to its proxy, Netscaler caches that, that traffic for you, and that flow gets all your information. You are still bringing other users over to Netscaler in that regard, because it's going to a thing, but you no longer have to change the path of travel. Just for the process. Um, yeah, so I'll give you a quick demo of, of, of how that works and what it looks like. So, uh, I'm, so I'm logging into my Nescaders now uh, for to configure the cache redirection option. Uh, because I ran the wizard, it, it automatically created um, the, the app flow information, the AppFlow servers, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I should highlight this now. So yeah, we're just going to confirm the collector policies actually do exist. So under AppFlow, under system, collectors, and there is my inside center already there, created by the policy. And again, I'm going to go ahead and use the collector for my um, VPN, because it's already HDX and So why not just use that policy? One step. Uh, avoid it. So under uh, traffic management, contact switching virtual servers, Sorry, uh, cache redirection virtual service. You could go ahead and create a cache redirection server, give it an IP address, <coughs> port, uh, type forward, and um, protocol HTS. That's it. That's pretty much all you need to do. Um, and once you go over to the policy manager, you can you override the global for ICA, which points it at the policy. So because that traffic came in as ICA traffic, it's going to go, we're going to select to choose to point it in the same direction as the policy that we have for our VPN, already created by the wizard, and uh, that's pretty much it. So, once I've done that, it will work in real time. So that's right. 
Again, remember, 60 seconds ish for the state of the show. I'm actually using my wife's account. Yes, she has an account on my lab. Sometimes she likes to use my PC. Best to just give her her password. <laughs> uh, then out an ICA file. You can see in the ICA file there, I've added the proxy options in advance. So I want your stuff in service, modify the default ICA file, pop these values in, which is the proxy. So the IP address of the load balance you created, the port you, choose, you chose, and um, the host. So yeah, tree entry is pretty much the same, and type of socks. Once you've done that, you launch the file, you log in to a lovely desktop, pop back in, and with any look now, after a refresh or two, we'll see the LAN traffic. No, I guess. About an hour, not one looking at day. So, and there we are, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> so, one, literally, once you put this in line, it goes off uh, and routes you via the SCA, you get your data immediately. Very, very handy. No more layer to layer tree changes, no more routing everything via your SCA. ICA file change, and off you go. Off you go. My beautiful assistant is trying to stop. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, to you. Okay, some, some sizing guidelines um, for your average office users and um, low traffic. Um, three kegs probably is probably fine. When we get into some of the heavier traffic, probably need to go for something a bit, a bit heavier. Um, so, send medium traffic there, a lot of web usage and office applications. Um, again, high traffic. A lot of videos right from that type of thing. Okay, so some scalable figures. This, I mean, obviously, this is a, this, you know, a number of different uh, <laughs> insight or different uh, NSCA versions. So, as I said, this will be available for download. But to give you an idea of the of the of the hardware patterns, I mean, these are freaking monsters, you know. So, just be aware that they do put a considerable amount of load on your NSCA, which is good because you get all the data back out again. But just don't spin up a VPX for 10,000 users and think everything's going to go great. It's just a launcher. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I mean, obviously the factors uh, uh, affecting the actual inside VM. So I was talking about NSCA, so let's talk about the, the inside VM itself. Um, because of the VM, people have this horrible um, habit of overcommitting the CPU and the RAM and the disk on it. Happens with NSCA all the time. I want to cry or hit the person because I mean, if, if your NetScaler isn't getting the performance it needs, how do you expect it to have the performance that the user wants? You know, so w when you're when you're assigning out uh, resources to inside into NetScaler, reserve it, commit it, or don't squeeze it because it needs solution very quickly. Similarly with inside. Um, so we're going to go over you know, the number of v cores that run down to see the data diversity. You know, how much data you actually getting in. And the disk IO. Disk IO is particularly heavy, obviously, because it's reading all this information and storing it in databases, it's, it's running off. So um, don't just stick it on SATA and think it's going to go in. With 10,000 users, it's, it has an impact, to say the least. Um, but hey, that's what we want the data. So, you know, to give you an idea of the, the kind of connections and the, the, the kind of size you want your inside VM to run, these guidelines are to 10.1, but I'm told with good confidence that they should scale up to. So, you're talking about a considerably good, big, uh, you know, inside VM if you want that kind of level of data or for, for web inside. And similarly with HDX inside, you want a nice big one. And, and again, don't overcommit this. It's not going to end well for anybody. It's going to leave the customer a bad taste. Probably ruin the reputation of the product. Give it enough size, it'll fly. Uh, so yeah, web so 10.5. The kind of you know the RAM, the VCP, the transaction cycle. How much you should expect to see coming through this film. I'll, again, I'll post this slides our series up. Uh, I'll tweet it out, and it'll be there, so you can download and have a play and have a look. See what you think. Uh, oh, hey, Brian. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Uh, so that's right. And and again, you know the 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 hard drive in particular. You know, you be very very careful. Um, size and size and size and size and size. Do your do your uh, research in advance. And again, don't plug this into production with 10,000 users on a VPX. The UAT environment, have a play first. Don't just put this in line because it's not going to go well for you. Um, and then, of course, you know, the kind of storage and the, the bandwidth of storage is going to require. 
I don't know, I thought you skipped them. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it, much it in a nutshell. It's, it's a really great product. Um, it's freely available to most people. Gives you a lot of insight into what's actually happening on the wire at any given point in time. What kind of you know, traffic is going across for the web and HDX. And in my opinion, I just wish they'd, they'd apply the same principle for how good this product is to the director. Because this is a really, really good product for what, for what it does and how, how well it does it. So I'd love to see a convergence of insight and director at a certain point. Iframes are fine, but more, more convergence later. So I'm um, going to open the floor to questions. We are technically around time, but I think they started this late, so we've done well. <laughs> uh, does anybody want to know anything about insight or a scanner? Or? Can you say something about integration in WordPress Cloud and Insight Center? Workspace Cloud and Insight Center? Yes. That's going to be difficult. Does it work? I'm asking you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, now I'm, what I'm asking. Knowing what, I, knowing what I know about Insight, and, and so Workspace Cloud, your director is up over here. Open the cloud. So how is it going to NS route back down to the Insight Center? So no, I can imagine this isn't going to work right now. Um, but I will go ahead and research it for you, because if that... If you ask, okay, so if your connector was routing the traffic via, that would be nice. That would be nice. So you know, you're obviously what works in this cloud, you've got the you've got your cloud connector. If the director could talk then via that, pull that information out, that would be good. Um, but I'm not going to register that as a query because you can go ahead and do that too. So, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so if, uh, if, if that's everything, thank you very much. And that is it.